it is the start of day 16 16 mm -hmm. and although for the first two weeks we were really um stuck to schedule the last maybe four or five days have had a lot more hiccups our bikes keep screwing up feels like it's been raining for like a week straight the roads are absolutely crazy and the bloody hills are oh, killing yeah. us now we're camped in the middle of nowhere trying to find our way to a hospital but to the point where it's now like just painful all the time like to walk or just to exist it's beautiful but we're um yeah the chance of doing it in 30 days is getting very very slim With the 35 days we could get off work, would it be possible to tie in all the UK national parks into one big pedal powered loop? Door to door and cycling from England to Scotland, then to Wales and then back into England, it was roughly a 2,000 mile route. We are back in fucking England! I, have, I don't think I've ever been so excited to be back in England. That meant living from our tent and riding almost 70 miles a day, 12 hours a day, come rain or shine for over a month. It sounded like a bonkers challenge right at the cusp of our physical ability. But we love challenges. It would also be a sweet opportunity to do some good, raise some money for charity and help protect these awesome landscapes that inspire us so much. And so we were decided, it was on. After months of non-stop riding, fundraising, eating, bike prepping and route planning, there was only one thing left to do, hit the road. And so we set off with no idea what to expect. Would our bodies cope? Did we have the willpower? Would it be 30 days of concrete jungles, busy roads and nightmare drivers, or pristine landscapes and nature overload? Only one way to find out. We're Josh and Sarah, by the way, and this is our Ride for the Wild Challenge. Fresh-faced and really apprehensive, we set off for a day of firsts. Starting navigation, 1,746 miles left. Coming up to our first climb of the day and the first climb of the challenge. First of many. <laughs> first descent. Finally going down. Greenhow Hill. First water refills. Hydration. <coughs> and second national parks. Ooh. North Yorkshire Moors National Park and there's a horse on a hill <laughs> a white horse it was only 50 miles away <laughs> our first unknown road and first wild camps so we have found the field but we are deciding the best spot in the field we woke up for our first breakfast this absolutely pinch bag of porridge mixture. So how many days will this last, sir? Sure. Just for comparison, this is Sarah's head and that's a bag of porridge. And the first of many, many rainy warnings. The reality of packing up in the rain. The weather was pants, but it didn't take away from the landscapes and the awesome off-road cycling. We said goodbye to the North Yorkshire Moors and made our way to National Cycle Route 1. So we are on National Cycle Route 1, which is a pretty cool route. It goes literally from the south coast of the UK right up to the most northern point of Scotland. Um, filled with loads of cyclists, lots of cycle cafes. A lot, like A lot of it's on tarmac, a lot of it's off-road. Absolutely loving the gravel, but at that pace, 
hitting 60 to 70 miles a day felt absolutely impossible. By day two, we were completely smashed. <coughs> so, it's half three. The whole, I'd say like the majority of today has been off-road. And it's still off-road for a long, long way. And it's just so slow going. Passing through Middlesbrough, Sunderland, and then on to Newcastle, we came up to our first real test. So we're coming to the end of the day. We're both pretty fucked, aching, little niggly injury feeling things. Cycled pretty hard. I think we're coming up to 70 miles. And we've got a river to cross. And I don't know if this bridge is cyclable. There's lifts down to the bridge, but the bridge, the lifts are shut. And so now we've got to wheel the bikes down some stairs to get onto the cycleway. Ooh. So after a very long day yesterday, we, um, after the issue with the lifts, carrying our bikes down lifts, we're both like quite battered and bruised. We cycled more than we should have cycled. In three days, we cycled through three national parks, ticking off Northumberland National Park just before crossing the border into Scotland. But this is where the ride took a slight change. To get round every UK national park in a month make taking the quickest route possible. We realised this wasn't always going to be the most scenic option. It's warming up, it's also getting really hard. Um, we've done the first 20 miles and it's all flat. We're on a busy road, but I'm just like, my body's aching. A lot of shoulder pain. Um, another 30-ish miles when we get to Edinburgh. But on a fast and direct route, we were making progress. We have reached Edinburgh. And though it seemed like a whole other world from the national parks we'd cycled through, it felt like our first big accomplishment. Four days down and still on target. Celebrating with a taste of Scotland's finest. You first. No, go on, you go. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Riding over the fourth bridge and further north, the cold and miles really started to take their toll. To hit 60 or 70 miles a day, we Very were waking difficult. at 6am, cycling for a good 12 hours, that 16,380 pedal rotations, then finding a spot to pitch by about 9pm, try and stretch, eat as many calories as possible, then hope to crash out before midnight. Come 6am, we'd start that cycle all over again. But as we got closer to the Cairngorms, a late summer sun came out. The landscapes opened up, the roads quietened down, and the riding was absolutely stunning. It just filled you with warmth and inspiration, almost like you were absorbing the energy around you. It's morning number six, and surprisingly, I actually feel, I felt worse after the first few days, and now I think my body's getting it, that it's like, I'm gonna hurt you for a while, you're gonna have to deal with it. Um, You've got your bike legs. My bike road legs, legs. But my upper body's a bit stiff, my legs are, uh, uh, yeah, I've got my road legs. How's your body? I felt like, okay, I felt really rubbish the first couple of days, I felt really stiff. Even though we didn't stretch yesterday, I'm feeling, feeling okay. We have hit our most northerly point. We're in the Cairngorms, 
Mm -hmm. We had a Scottish man say it and he said, Cairngorms. 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 Number five. Cairngorms, Cairngorms, Cairngorms. Our most northerly national park. We're now coming south in the Cairngorms and we are climbing. Look at this smile. <laughs> That's the smile of such a good downhill. How good was that? That was like going from Ben Nevis to sea level. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the temperatures were dropping and we now had a really long journey all the way south. Every single lunch break, I'm absolutely knackered. And I'm always thinking, I'm going to have a really long break. I'm going to sit, I'm going to chill, I'm going to take my time. And then it gets to the lunch break and I get cold after 10 minutes and I want to start cycling again. So today I'm going to wrap up really warm. Now I am ready. I fell asleep. So it's the morning of day seven. We have left Killin. One week. One week. Cycling towards Loch Lomond at the moment on a fairly busy road. But it is absolutely beautiful. We managed to get the battery pack charged a bit. Jay currently has the pedal set on, so his riding is hindered a bit. The tent is almost dry. We've got food in our panniers, water, water in our bottles, <laughs> wind in our sails, <laughs> and we're riding. Bring on luck moment. This leg of the journey was actually really frustrating. The landscapes around us were so immense, but on such a busy road, it all just seemed so far away. Our route was ripping us through so quickly there was barely enough time to take any of it in. Loch Lomond. Made it to Loch Lomond. In all its glory. But the times we did get to stop. <sighs> Makes it all worthwhile. Dropping past Glasgow, things changed very quickly. So we're following this for another 60 odd miles to Carlisle. He tells of me who owns the boots beneath the bed where my well, yeah. Definitely not the most enjoyable cycling. We're on a cycle route, but it's just like hugging. It's, we're on a road that hugs a motorway and it's just filled with kind of offshoots of big like service vehicles and trucks and logging, logging people and ugh, loads of like shit all over our face and dust and mud. And my head's just like rattling with like trucks whizzing past us every five seconds. But as grim as it was, it was quick. Before we knew it, we'd cycled back into England and had the Lake District in our sights. So we're going kind of near Land's End, 478 miles. What then? Only a few weeks. Coming off the big busy roads was a huge relief. And there stood the hills of the Lake District standing proud ahead of us. We just had to contend with a heat wave and profuse sweating. We've done three miles and it feels like 30. Yeah. Holy shit. It left you half blind in the midday sun and sapped the life out of you. But then the magic of the lakes would fill you back up with energy. Unlike our route in Scotland, and even though we were on a busy road for a lot of the time, here you really did feel like you were inside the landscape. Flying through the hills, you just felt alive, with a constant grin on your face. Not being able to stop and just jump in those lakes was a real killer especially in the heat. But we were starting to get into the swing of things. There was a newfound strength in our legs that made the 30 day target seem Number six. Number possible. six, Woo five and one. We had one night in the national park. Then before we knew it, we were out of Cumbria and into Lancashire. Camped up near the beach, the blast of sun seemed to have warmed our souls and energised us. We'd spent nearly two weeks in a tent, every moment outside, and it was having an impact. 
The mornings were becoming easier, the days didn't feel so grueling and we were feeling excited. Then the weather finally broke and these refreshing temperatures just added to our energy. As we approached the Welsh border and nearly the two week mark, somehow we were still on target. We'd averaged between 60 and 70 miles a day. Inside, there was a quiet confidence starting to row, thinking, shit, we might actually be able to do it. Then we crossed the Welsh border and all of that changed. First off, it got hilly. And I mean really bloody hilly. I don't know if you can tell how steep these are, but they're absolutely, oh God, torturous. And they just keep going. I don't know how there's more hills. We knew Wales was gonna be the toughest part of the trip, but nothing could have prepared us for this. It was constant. These hills are so steep, and they just keep going. The lanes were so steep and winding, with so much moss and debris, a lot of the time we were pushing the bikes up and then having to carefully freewheel down. Oh hey, this is pretty atmospheric. It's so steep that you can't really make the most of the downhill. Oh shit. For the first time, we hadn't hit our 60 mile target. We stopped in a pub to try and find a place to camp and some locals took a shine to us. Lynn and Ian invited us to pitch in their garden but not before getting us royally rat assed with their mate Paul. Some of the warmest people we've ever met, who we'll never forget. But the next day... Oh, I'm feeling hungover. We've done four miles. This is the hideous day of the trip. And then it got worse. I have uh, just realised I've lost my waterproof. I don't know whether I left it at their house this morning or if I left outside Aldi, but it is no longer here. And as you can see, now is a good time for a waterproof. Shit. So now Sarah has her waterproof and has just decided to rub it in my face. With the next sections crossing over high exposed moorlands, I needed to find another waterproof. Only problem was, Betsy Coed was the closest place to pick up another, and that meant a big detour. I made do with a bin bag. We found another National Park sign. Two. Number seven! seven. Sladonia National Park. And I finally got a new waterproof. But the diversion had set us back big time. So before we were about 50 miles behind schedule, so about a day of just under a day of riding. And now we're quite a bit more than that. We've not properly worked out, but we are definitely quite a bit behind. So we need to try and figure out how we can make up for it in the next two weeks. We set off into the driving rain, determined to make up time, but the hills and weather had other ideas. Like in Yorkshire, I feel like you, it's fairly level and then you have big climbs and then it levels out again. <clears throat> in Wales, it's just constantly hilly and then you still have big climbs like this. Pushing so hard in constantly wet clothing was also starting to cause an even bigger problem. Third, two thirds of the way up. Uh, just seeing that Sarah is quite a bit behind. Uh, saddle sores getting really bad. There's a really crazy mix of feelings when you're just in awe of the landscape around you, but it's also kicking your ass. Holy shit, this is fucking cool. And for the first time, the roads just seemed way too dangerous to cycle. This meant huge detours onto off-road routes that seemed to climb every hill possible. Oh, a uh, buzzard, I think a buzzard. It was epic, but added on nearly double the distance and more than double the time. By the end of day 15, we'd cycled all day, but covered only 30 miles. And it had really taken its toll. Adventure update, day 17. 16. 16, uh, things are not quite going according to plan. 
No, so we are currently waiting at the toilet block of our campsite to get a taxi to the nearest town where we then get a bus to the minor injuries unit because I have an infection caused by saddle sore which is very very painful sort of progressively getting worse because we're constantly cycling it's thing, very wet yeah the things that we're doing so like we're sweating it's raining i'm wearing tucker clothing which isn't great for waterproof your, trousers yeah so it's just not giving it time to heal so this infection has got to the point where it's now like just painful all the time like to walk or just to exist, so we're going to try and see if we can get something to get it sorted. You might be thinking, you're choosing to cycle and try and do it in 30 days. Why not just make it easier? And that's a good question. We wanted to use this challenge to do some good. We're raising money for Trees for Life, an awesome rewilding charity in the Scottish Highlands, and had spent the whole summer fundraising for them. The more time we spent riding through these landscapes, the more inspired we were to protect them. Our answer was to ride hard and hopefully get as many donations as possible. Besides only being able to get a month off work, we thought the harder the challenge, the more money it could raise. Now with thousands of pounds in donations for our 30 day grueler, a promise had been made and we needed to keep to it. And so we were staying positive. 17. We have woken up on day 17 after four days of almost constant rain and the weather is beautiful the sun is shining and how are you feeling Fu? i'm feeling optimistic i'm feeling a bit better than i was the sun is shining so that adds to my feeling of optimism so what's our plan our plan is to cycle we set off for what would be one of our most incredible days of cycling Literally came through the opening in the woodland and was just like, oh my fuck! <sighs> this is incredible. The idea was to take it easy and hopefully Sarah could recover in the saddle. But going easy in North Wales isn't so simple. We thought it was the top. Turns out it was a full summit. And now we head up here. To just keep cycling and hope for the best, was no longer an option. We opted against the A road and took a cycle route, which I think was our highlight of cycling so far. Mm. But then we got to what was meant to be lunch point and the pain that I was experiencing was sort of too excruciating. So we sort of had to stop for the day. Two things to consider that we both sort of stay here, wait it out until I fully recover and then continue the journey. Alternatively, um, Josh could continue um, and I could then get a train sort of to a city or a spot further ahead and meet Josh in X amount of days and then we continue, which means that Josh is sort of just connecting the dots. After such a long summer of training and prepping, the thought of splitting paths and not crossing the finish line together was absolutely gutting. I could see how much it was tearing Sarah apart particularly with something that was completely out of her hands. With the options available, it seemed best for Sarah to get a train further ahead to Bristol. She'd have some bike-free days to recover whilst I connected the dots for us. We got busy splitting the bags up and cooked up a big last meal together. Oh yeah. <laughs> Masterpiece. It's going to be weird. It'll be my first. I've never, I've never toured on my own. I've done like overnights and stuff. It's going to be a learning curve, I think. So I've got. We're going to meet in five days. It's just under, ju literally just under 300 miles, with two, 20,000 feet of ascent uh, across the five days, which is pretty fucking bonkers. With all the extra gear. Bloody hell! Did I mention I've got 20,000 feet of ascent? in the next couple of days. My thighs are already hurting. This is it, we're going. This is the side of the thighs. And so I'd cycle as hard as I could, then hopefully we could make up time on the flat south coast. The 30 day target was still within reach. Exhausted and against the clock, the hills became my enemies. 
Everywhere in Wales is just so fucking hilly. God, this is so painful. It just keeps going. It feels like I'm just constantly climbing. It's difficult to properly explain just quite how hard these days were. I was already smashed for more than two weeks of constant cycling and had then added more weight and up the miles on the toughest part of the trip. And doing it solo meant being switched on from dusk till dawn, taking on all the tasks and responsibilities we'd normally share. I was struggling. How did they know? After six hours, five and a half hours, I have made it to the halfway point of my day. 30 miles done. I feel like I've just been climbing the whole day. But like many times before, my spirits were lifted by the landscapes around me. I have made it to Pembrokeshire coast. I can't find any um, national park sign. So this will have to do. Literally, the Pembrokeshire coast. It's wet, but I'm really happy to be here actually. This, I think, for the whole trip um, was a place I was most excited to get to. Uh, even though the weather's not great, it's definitely not let me down. It's such an incredible coastline. That view is just fucking amazing. Especially as the sun's kind of setting. Doing the cooking. After an evening's respite, the coastal views were dosing me with energy, but I was really getting my ass kicked. The third day was a complete blur. Really starting to struggle a little bit. Feel run down, no energy or strength in my legs. Like every hill feels like fucking Everest. And like the pressure of trying to get to Bristol in time so Sarah can hopefully finish the challenge before her work starts is it's quite stressful because like obviously I I want her to be able to do it so I don't want to be you know the reason why she's not able to do it is because I couldn't cycle fast enough but it's smashing me pushing the bike up a hill and stopping for my lunch early I'm getting seriously light in the head Oof. I don't like tablets. I'm hoping that might sort me out a little bit. I just sat down for lunch, but it's just started raining. Oh, it's gonna come down, for fuck's sake. It is so wet and I'm so tired. I just want somewhere dry to eat the rest of my lunch. Pushing that hard just sapped the enjoyment out of riding, for me anyway. I've got 14 miles until my stop. I was no longer absorbing the places around me. I just kept my head down, thinking of distances and end of day destinations. Yesterday was um, definitely one of my hardest days of cycling ever. Um, by the end of it, it was raining all day. It was just so hilly. I got rooted onto a massive, like big busy road. I was just feeling a bit like disorientated from not, I think I just wasn't taking enough salts. By the end of the day, just like camped in the middle of nowhere on my own, just felt very, um, like downbeat and not very, um, just like, why am I doing this? This is not enjoyable. The start of day four on my own, the sun had come out and I decided to take things a little bit easier. There's a lot of sheep. A lot of sheep. This is the north of the Brecon Beacons. Ah, oh, it's really amazing. No one else around, loads of sheep. And then you'd see views like that and it'd bring you right back down to earth, reminding you why you're doing it. This view is so good. Man, I wish I had water and I camped right there. Optimism topped up, strength back in the legs and grin back on my face. I found the Brecon Beacons National Park sign and had the ultimate prize waiting for me the next morning. I we have back, arrived. We are back together. Reunited, we had a long downhill ride out of the Brecon Beacons and over the Severn Bridge from Wales and back into England. I feel like Wales is giving us a fond farewell. The roads are quiet. The weather is literally like perfect. You couldn't have asked for better. England is over there. 
I just got across that sea. We are crossing the river, the Severn Bridge, Severn Bridge. We'd never forget the Welsh nature and warmth of the people, but we would be glad to see the back of the hills. They'd left us battered and bruised. Crossing back over to England brought a wave of energy. Not only did this mean some easier riding, but we'd also crossed the halfway 1,000 mile mark of our 2,000 mile journey. Now, we were on the home straight. In that short space of time, Sarah's injury hadn't just miraculously healed. It was clear that 60 mile days were no longer possible and the 30 day target was out of the window. But none of that mattered. The sun was shining, we were back together and had plenty of the UK left to explore. Instead of just riding till we crumbled, we'd listen to our bodies and embrace each bit of every day. There's a thrill to cycling relentlessly, then marvelling at how much distance you've covered. But, in honesty, it was killing us speeding through these beautiful locations, numbed and exhausted, without any time to take it in. And more than that, our bodies had just had enough of it. First 20 miles, I'm struggling every, like, even after 10 miles I'm pooped. To be honest, I wake up and I'm still fucking tired. And so we dropped the gears, lowered our expectations and forgot the daily targets. We keep to the route and just cycle. Cycle for cycling's sake. Lapping up every bit of nature as we were going past. And it felt fucking amazing. Things that had never seemed exciting before suddenly did. The pile of mud! I have never seen a pile of mud that big. We even had time to make some chumps. One of the really good things about campsites is that you can make friends with all the other campers. These ones I particularly like. Hello. The hills were no longer enemies, the downhills were even sweeter, and the off-road sections didn't make us cry. Wild camps weren't just in dodgy spots that were close by, we found amazing places to pitch that meant peaceful nights. Even motorways couldn't bog us down. I don't know exactly where our route is taking us, but ahead we have the M5 and some really, really big <laughs> motorways. So I'm just double checking I've not taken us on a huge dual carriageway by accident. From Bristol to Glastonbury and through Somerset. Somerset, decided. <laughs> it's Somerset. To Exmoor National Number Park. Ten. Then down into Devon and to Dartmoor National Park. Number 11. 11. Dartmoor National Park. <laughs> Next stop, uh, New Forest. Getting onto the south coast, the hills levelled out, the days felt brighter and the strength had returned to our legs. So we have reached Hardy's Monument in Dawson and so if you come up here it's all pretty flat. I feel like this is, I'm hoping how the south coast is going to treat us for the rest of our lives. see on our right hand side and just flew along the coastline. With such relaxing cycling, before we knew it, we'd reached the New Forest National Park and then the South Downs National Park. We are in the South Downs. There are so many poopy minefields, which is not ideal <laughs> when you're trying to load the bikes because I keep stepping in shit. <laughs> but all good things have to come to an end. Our route is taking us through London. Uh, and now seems that it's going to be pretty busy the next 30 miles until we actually get into London. This is definitely not the most scenic part of our trip. I'm 
feel like we cycled into hell. We are coming to the tail end of the trip. And one thing that I loved is that when we started, we were very definitely in summertime. And we kind of like cycled through the seasons now. So we're in London, leaves are falling. It's the 30th of September, so it's officially autumn. And yeah, it feels really cool to have cycled from summer into autumn and seeing the, uh, seeing the seasons change. Sarah's work had been awesome and given us a few more days, but with the injuries and the additional miles on Wales, it was just impossible to make up the time. As we crossed through London, this is where we'd split past once again and Sarah would get a train back home. I'd keep riding for the final 400 miles, connecting the dots for the last two national parks. Not taking on the final leg together really sucked, but with any good adventure, there's always a risk of failure. I was just glad I could keep our adventure going. Setup. Yeah. You got half of Josh's stuff. So I've got other stuff in the back and then a sleeping bag on the front. I'd spent more than a month living from a tent and riding all day every day. Now there were just two more national parks to go. The next one, the Norfolk Broads, would take me right to the very east of England through the flattest part of the UK. It is day 34 or five, or maybe even six actually. Um, and it's the 3rd of October and it has got so much colder and there's a really terrible forecast for today is um, 26, a mile, 26 mile an hour winds with like 35 mile per hour gust, heavy rain, got the overshoes on and flooding chances. And like in the, the fens, it does flood a lot. Yeah, has been raining all day, but now I'm in my sanctuary, so I don't care. <laughs> so many slugs. But nothing was dampening my spirits. There's loads of buzzards above me. Blue skies. Ah, oh, so nice. Maybe my shoes will dry out. With lockdown and COVID, I'd barely seen my family for the last 12 months. But they'd be waiting for me at the Norfolk Broads and that kept me filled with such incredible motivation. Just spending an afternoon catching up with them recharged my batteries for the final leg of the trip. This part of the trip just took me through vast agricultural fields with monocultures as far as the eye can see. Fields and fields of fennel. All the pumpkins. Robo kale. A mile upon mile of corn. I cycled for hundreds of miles of battling headwinds with not a soul in sight. It all felt very isolated and lonely. Despite being green and earthy, it didn't feel natural. All the more reason to be raising money for such an awesome rewilding charity. Now that the trees are gone, it's really windy. <laughs> but I'm only a few miles off. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling uh, optimistic. The finish line was in sight. Seeing my family had put all the strength back in my legs. And then I looked down at the GPS. I don't know if you can see that, but on the distance left, it says 188 miles. That feels so fucking good. I can't explain. It's put like, give me such a lift, this huge boost. Like, cycled literally the whole way around the country 
north, east, south, west. 14 out of 15 national parks, 15 coming the day after tomorrow, and then I'll be home. After a big stormy weather, it's really nice when you can see some calm to the air. Yeah, last full day, I can't believe I'm saying it. I have one more night in the tent, and then the next day I finish at home. So this is my last full day. There's been loads of like dips and swings and like incredible points, but also like it's like Sarah's not here. Obviously, big bummer. But I'm looking forward to it. The winds have dropped. There is. Uh, I'm not going to jinx myself, but the forecast is better than it has been. Uh, because I've had the last two days, I've done 75 miles each. Um, so it means today I just have to do between 50 and 60. And so I set off, filled with giddiness and energy. Not just because this was the last push, but I'd be cycling through Sheffield, the city Sarah and I had lived in for six years and was filled with the happiest of memories. I've made it to my old stomping ground and then to the peaks, the first national park I ever visited, which opened my eyes to the wonders of the outdoors and its importance. Peak District, three miles, 15th and final national park. The day flew by and I couldn't wipe the grin off my face. Then before I knew it, I made it. <laughs> oh my God, that felt so good. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh man, that felt so fucking good. 15. Oh my god. That looks so good. Yes. Oh, oh. The sun was shining, the landscapes were blowing my mind, and I felt on top of the world. I wanted to embrace every minute of these final hours. I treated myself to a pint and some grub, then set off to lay my head down somewhere in search of the final wild camp. But those woods over there are looking mighty appealing. I've got some cake in my belly, some Guinness to help me sleep. <sighs> what a fucking ride. Beautiful sunrise just creeping up over there. Um, so I reached the Peak District yesterday. Uh, and seeing that lump of stone, seeing the Peak District, um, tears came to my eye and I never cry. Like Sarah's never seen me cry. I can't even remember the last time I cried. It's been so hard at points that I think seeing that sign, um, just all the last, like we've been training for it and preparing for it for like, nearly six months so to see that sign the 15th and final national park um yeah it just felt so good yeah it's a beautiful finish i've got um 65 60 ish miles to do to get home um and i'm just gonna make the most of it enjoy every minute After this whole summer, 52.4 miles until I crossed the finish line. Even though I was on my own, reaching this last stretch was only possible because of Sarah. We held each other together and took on the challenge as a team. Adventures don't always go to plan, but I was just happy to have connected the dots for us. And then the icing on the head. So I've just stopped for lunch outside Huddersfield with about 35 miles to go and saw the best news switching on my Wi-Fi. We hit our fundraising target of £2,000. Ah, it's been like such a big like thing in the back of my mind for the whole, I really wanted to hit £2,000 because it would be a pound for each mile that we've cycled. And it was in the back of my head lurking, just like we were so far off. We just had, no, we had like a whole week and a bit where there was no donations. And I just really wanted by the time we got back finished to have hit that mark and I've just seen that we're on 2,010 pounds with 35 miles to go and it's perfect weather it's such an incredible end to this trip oh yeah so happy
but this ride has been been so many things it's been like beautiful it's been like inspiring massively inspiring from like what i want to do in the future and like motivating me just to cycle like i just want to cycle all around the world to the most remote places like i knew that before but this ride is just um it just me i just know that that's what i what i gotta do i felt really lucky and privileged to have um to have now visited all of our beautiful national parks cycled from one to the other uh met so many fantastic people in all these countries wales in particular you people are amazing this is it's like one thing that has definitely confirmed is how lucky we are for all these natural spaces and how much but how much we need to fight to protect them because we are losing them i'm so happy sleeping in the tent i'm so happy with my like camp stove meals and like just to have spent the last 35 days living in a tent surrounded by nature rising and falling with the sunshine listening to birds and animals all day like that i will never ever want to change and we'll, well, I just want to do my best to be able to make that as big a part of every single day as possible. Um, but yeah, so that was Ride for the Wild. 2,000 miles, 15 national parks all around the UK. Here's to Wales and uh, strong vaginas. <laughs>